Uh, well, I think I'll start with um, just coming to Life Share. So we were kind of having a hard time finding a church in San Antonio. A lot of churches, but I don't know. It was just uh, it, we were just having a challenge finding a place where we felt the move of the Holy Spirit felt like we could worship and grow and uh, minister. And the first Sunday we came, I think it was in October, probably of 22, October, November. Uh, Pastor Anna was uh, giving a sermon on prophecy, and she prophesied over both Jamie and Jack. Never met us before. Out of the crowd and prophesied over them, and you know it's been um, such a, a blessed time. We didn't necessarily uh, want to move at the time that the I, I mean, which has been true of I guess quite a few of our moves, <laughs> and uh, didn't really have any desire to come to San Antonio, but. It's really, uh, it's been a blessing, and, you know, I think of the fact that Jack, who knew that he wanted to be a missionary in Indonesia, but does, just wasn't sure what the path was to get to that point, you know, really felt called to go to um, what formerly was Southwest Assembly of God University in Waxahachie is now called Nelson University, and so, you know, that's where he's going here in uh, a month or so, um, and... He's, he's going to be on a missionary track there at, uh, at Nelson University, and we're just super excited about that. But um, the, you know, the Air Force, J- Jamie and I met when I was at the Air Force Academy in Colorado. She grew up in Colorado. Um, we started, we spent our first six weeks together here in San Antonio, actually out at Lackland, uh, as I was becoming a contracting, uh, contracting professional. Did that for a couple of years, then went to law school at OU. Um, and I'm, so I'm an Oklahoma licensed attorney, uh, but we didn't necessarily know that we would go back to Oklahoma until our kids started migrating there. So um, Greg and his wife went to Norman last year. Our daughter, Tran- Maddie, who went, you know, m- most of you know Maddie. Um, she transferred there last year. Uh, she's going into her senior year at University of Oklahoma. And so I had a friend reach out uh, about December of last year and say, hey, are you ready to retire? I said, um, no, not really. Uh, I'm planning on doing probably at least one more assignment. And, um, and he said, well, that's too bad because I think you would have been perfect for this job. I'm like, oh, well, what job? And he, uh, <laughs> so he kind of told me what position they had in their office, and it was a really good opportunity up at Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma. So I applied for that job, but you know, um, when you're when you're trying to follow God's direction in your life, it's not always smooth sailing. And so it was interesting because I applied for this job. Well, actually, so right before I get to that point, so Jamie and I start talking about it. We we just weren't sure. We weren't settled, and um, so uh, the thing that kind of made the decision for us. Um, was uh, just reading through um, Francis Chan's book, Crazy Love, and just really just having a lot of conversations about, like, what are we called to do? You know, what, what does God want to do with us? And, you know, we feel first and foremost we want to minister to our kids. Um, they, they made a lot of sacrifices <laughs> moving around for the last um, 22 years, and we just wanted to really prioritize them and... So, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> um, so that was the main thing. And we knew we wanted to be more involved in ministry. Um, and it's a little bit hard in, in when you're like a boss to, to just ha- be flexible in your timing and be at church when you need to be at church and that kind of thing. And so uh, this position is non-supervisory. Um, you know, we'll have more free time, more flexibility. And... Um, so we're really excited about ministering first to our family, then our community, and, and, and our church and our community. And um, so we felt that confirmation. We applied for the job. And then um, the first, well, so I get a call a couple weeks later, and they're like, yeah, you, you got filtered out. Like, your resume didn't even make it. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, really? That's, that's odd. And, uh, and this is the Air Force for you. It's just there's a bureaucratic process you got to get through before you even get to the people that are actually hiring that actually know what they want in the job. You have to make it through the Air Force Personnel Center. And so had to, you know, so that was kind of anxiety-inducing, like, like kind of the main reason we were, or, you know, one of the main reasons we had decided to retire and the timing was right. It looked like it wasn't going to happen. Had to kind of fight through that battle. Ultimately, they were able to get... Um, 
my get it back on the cert is the, the way they describe it. But basically get back into the selection pool. Um, can't do that hurdle. Um, got a tentative job offer a couple months ago. They're still working through the wickets of finalizing the job offer, but it looks like that's where we're going to land. And um, I mean, the bottom line is that uh, th there's just been many, many blessings along the way and just, you know, confirmations in our life that, that this is the right time uh, to make the transition, to retire, and to be able to choose where we want to be and, and, and how we're going to, uh, to, you know, transition from kind of serving the Air Force to, to more uh, serving um, our family and our church and our community. So, did you have anything else you want to say? No? <laughs> All right. That was good, dude. The love of God will get you, right? Get you right in your heart. I love that. Love for God, love for his family, and the family's made sacrifices. Now dad's going to lay it down and serve the family. Beautiful. I want to have Chris and Jamie come because you guys helped in kid, kid men, and I know they, and we appreciate you for that. So, Jamie. You guys are so easy to honor. Thank you. Um, Scott, that we call him the Hodges, like endearingly, Hodges. the Hodges, the Hodges bunch. But they came, like Ted said, to Lysher when we were at the dirty old dance hall. And I mean, right away, as soon as they decided we were their people, they started moving chairs, stacking them. They did, they did were just roll up their sleeves. And we've just loved watching you guys as a family. Y'all are a cool unit. Um, and I would just encourage you, there's no lack. You guys are incredible parents. We've just gleaned from that from y'all they not only parent their kids well but they bring in exchange students in their home and love them like family they've served here faithfully with us and kids the fact that scott i remember i'll never forget jamie joined my small group and just so easily transitioned into like friendship and you've been such a delight but i'll never forget the day she told me scott wants to start helping in kids and i'm like oh he does that's awesome and she goes and i'm gonna help and i'm like yes but they didn't just come the two of them although y'all are a dynamic duo they're so patient and they brought a wisdom to teaching our kids like the bible and just so lovingly have been faithful to that so thank you guys they're busy he works a full-time job she runs a business and they have a bunch of kids but they made the church their priority and it meant a lot to us so thank you so much for doing that and not just y'all but jack i wanted him to be up here because Jack, he, he jump in, he teach the kids, he cares about mentoring people. And like Ted said, he has a call in his life to be a missionary. And so, you know, that starts by being faithful in the local church. This is where you put down your roots. And then, you know, so it's a joy that you guys are going out and we're going to miss you so much, but we just really want to honor you and say thank you for everything that you brought to us and taught us while you were here. And I think that scripture is so perfect. It's, it's actually what the Lord gave me as I prayed for y'all, because you did just that. You came here and you let your roots go down deep while you were here. So thank you guys so much. We love you. Oklahoma, whatever church you go to is getting a treasure. Good job. Hodges, family, you guys rock. And I, I, she, that's my thunder right there. It says on there, they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night like trees planted along the riverbank. Bearing fruit each season, their leaves will never wither and they will prosper in all they do. I declare that over you. I think, Scott, your passion for your family speaks for itself. You were up here, and what I heard is family, family, family. You're proud of your family. God's going to reward you and continue to reward you because you're an awesome dude. Both you, I mean, your whole family is wonderful. And what you've guys done here, I remember when we were building this building, he was in the trenches with us. So the servant's heart's there, man. We love you. We're going to miss you, Hodges. All right, so let's stretch a hand of blessing. Lord, we, we lift, lift up the Hodges family to you. Lord, we thank you, God, that you allowed our paths to cross. And what a wonderful family that felt the call of God to serve our nation in the military. They've done a fantastic job. And, Lord, we thank you that they're still in your army, the Lord's army. They're soldiers and they're servants. And we know that you're going before them. We thank you for opening up the job, open up the housing open up the relationships, the right church. Lord, go before them and bless them, bless them, bless them, protect them. And Lord, we pray that they would be closer than ever as a family unit. To God be the glory. Amen.